or subscribe to my mom's channel. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And go back up. Yes. <laughs> I thought I told you. What's going on, everybody? This is Raft the Angel, and I'm here with Rebel Jones on her show. Living in the process. And we're doing a segment called Facts. And Feelings. I remember to ask I me thought I told you. Today. Don't be having me just interview you. It's our show. I like being interviewed. This is fun. You go. <laughs> <laughs> we're just waiting for the motorcycle. And actually... It's Bosky, bitch. OK. So what are the real pressures that you're experiencing as a father, a husband, and a lover? I mean, because I don't really think being a husband and being a lover really goes hand in hand. Well, I'm lucky enough to be born black. And there's a lot of statistical pressure about households, right? You know, they say none of us have fathers. Right. We all grew up in single Stereotype. parent households. Stereotypes, for sure. And that's why we fail. We don't have plans. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to break, break the stigma and break, as they say, the generational curses. Yeah. You know, and um just, just so just so we know, about eighteen million black people, about which is like four in ten black people, mm -hmm. live in households that are headed by married couples. Wow. Right? And I think that they say like none of us have fathers. And like we grew up with black families, we know. Yep. We know some people got parents. That's a ridiculous idea that nobody has a father. Right. You know what I mean? Um so I think that is there's that a in pressure. America though? That's in the US. In the US. This is in the US, okay. yes. This is all according to Pew Research, the Pew Research Center. Um mm -hmm. A January 2024 report. And wow. I would like to make sure that kids in the future don't have to live up to that pressure of, man, I don't want to make a household where it's just, just just the wife is the one raising the kids or it's just me raising the kids. Yeah. It shouldn't be that. My option should only be I'm going to be a father in a home. What about for those people who are out there who are like polygamous or opposite of polygamous who are like queer and having children with the opposite sex, but dating and, and, and engaging in same-sex relationships. When you say, like, the idea is man and woman to have children, how would you promote a harmonious relationship to those who are homosexual? To be frank, I don't. I don't promote their harmonious relationship because I'm not a part of that community. Mm. So I'm not meeting a gay guy and say, hey, you need to go meet your husband and have a kid, nor am I saying the same thing to a queer woman. That's their decision to find a relationship and have their own family. They actually have higher divorce rates than um, heterosexual families. Mm. Um, so I'm not trying to tell them go get married. No, I'm not telling them get divorced. They're, they're making their own choices. Since I'm not making headway into that lifestyle, I'm not going to tell them what they should do or not. But the stats that I have, though, do include them. Okay. They are included. Oh, it does. They are included. They're families none nonetheless. Families are nonetheless. So when you say families nonetheless, that means that there's a neutral ground for everyone, no matter what sex you're dating, that families is important, that the unit is important. 100%. Mm. I think it takes two. I even, agree. Even if it's polygamy, it takes a village. I think that it takes more than one person to yeah. raise a person who was made by two people. Yeah. So I think that's the difference. Do you think that it would be easy to raise your children by yourself? And by, without any father? Man, when you were gone for those six months and all I had to do was take the kids to school and go to work, I thought that in my mind it was simple. But the challenge was really being able to do the same thing every single day without, like, without fault, you know, like without error. Does that mean you like could predict yourself burning out? Now I can. I think that well, I had like women support me. And I think women supporting women makes like the operation so much smoother. Isn't that how it's been done for so many years? But right? it's just because I had my brother in law help out. And I love you. I love you. I ain't gonna say your name, but <laughs> they just kind of went a little left, you know? So with that experience, I'm like, yeah, I prefer to have women help me because there's, this, you know, when, they, when men say, I can't read women's minds, but for some reason, we can read each other's minds and we are able to execute tasks without having to really have a long conversation about it. That brings up an interesting topic too, because there's the pressure of women wanting their partners to I communicate I knew in a similar <laughs> aspect in a way women communicate with each other. Yeah. 
It doesn't really exist like that. I don't think, well, I mean, the LGBTQ community would disagree. There are men who can communicate perhaps, with women. Perhaps that's why they're making that step into the LGBT community. But, but I'm saying, when you were my friend, it was so easy to talk to you. Sure. But the minute we became lovers, it was like, I can't share. Yeah. No, I'm too much. Right. There was a bit of modesty. But why? Because we want to show off to each other. When we're just friends, it's like, I don't care what you don't think of me. I don't have to show up to anybody. Right. So. As, friends, we, as friends, we don't care what anybody thinks. You're my friend. It's whatever, bro. It's cool. But if I'm in love with you, you want to show off. You want to make sure, you want to make sure I'm reminded why I chose you. And I, I, you may not think that you're doing it, but you're 100% doing it. It's like this, the quote you made about sex, right? Yeah. You want to make sure that I'm satisfied so I don't go be with someone else. True. And you're trying to live up to a quota. I feel that. I feel that. I think the fact that the matter is is reproduction, but so much of that in in the current state of our of our social um, political family, right? I like to say that being our community, um, what we all agree on the same mindset, all of it. We all believe that family is important, but when it boils down to reproduction, it seems as though the community altogether is like divided. Because yeah. like well, I don't, I don't want to bring my child into this crazy world, but we're mm -hmm. the ones who are creating this this yeah. world. You know, we have to come to one accord. And I think the pressure of knowing history, knowing what we want our future to be like, uh, can be very overwhelming, especially with everyone having different opinions or just saying yes because they don't want certain pockets of communities to judge them or cancel them, like with cancel culture. Um, how do you survive as a heterosexual male in this cancel culture when it comes to relationships? Well, fuck cancel culture. <laughs> Can't cancel. I'm alive. You know what I mean? Though mm. that's the only way you can be canceled is if you're dead. Mm. You can. You, you're gonna try to destroy my image of what I can't be an influencer anymore. I don't care about that. I got a family. You know what I mean? I got a job. You know what I mean? The cancel culture. The idea that someone says I can make a phone call to your boss and say that you said something disrespectful and that's the end of your career is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. That's, you know what I mean? Especially if they're an influencer, we pay these people to hear their opinions. Yeah. And now all of a sudden we don't want to hear them anymore. We're going to rally together to cancel that person. I think that's ridiculous. Well, I don't think we pay them out of our own pockets, but we definitely give them attention and companies, corporations, small businesses, pay them to continue talking about whatever they want to talk about in relation to their businesses. Well, yeah, that's that's the flow of advertisement. You know what I mean? I pay for, yeah. a, I pay for a cell phone bill and Wi-Fi, and then Instagram makes sure that I have access, and then people are like, hey, well, Instagram's using this much data because they get this many followers. How about we give them this $100,000 and we can run an advertisement to get our image out yeah. to these people? So, you know, where we are funding them in a way, it just might not be directly, but that's... Yeah. Just the mighty power of our dollar. Yeah, and, uh, and currency in general. I definitely feel like we can <laughs> change the narrative of men and women relations. And I definitely love that there are so many podcasts and platforms mm. that are having these discussions to shine light on women's, some women's unrealistic beliefs, mm. but also shine light on some of the unrealistic beliefs of men. Like, can you imagine the fact that there was a time where women stayed home and cleaned and took care of the kids and was just childbearers, but now we're yeah. working and we're taking care of our children. Yeah. But that's pressure in itself because, you know, we're talking about a soft girl era where women are being told like, yes, sis, be soft, be kind, let your, you know, let your yin and your yang hang. But even doing that is a lot of pressure because that costs money. Mm -hmm. Like getting my hair done, getting my nails done, that costs money. And so for some women, especially young women younger than me and my age and older, there has always been a belief amongst all ages of women that the next young woman is going to take your place at some point. So you got to make your mark and leave your mark now. Get a husband or get money from a man who cares about you enough to take care of all your basic needs and then some. Time is definitely a pressure. I think the biggest uh, pressure, well, according to Carol Lieberman, Dr. Carol Lieberman of Forbes, the, the biggest pressure is that we get our hopes up that the next relationship is the one. Mm. We don't, we don't want to run out of time. And that produces a pressure on our mental health. Yeah. You know, every time we date, it's like, oh, I hope this works out. We put everything into it mm. and not realizing that 
that person that we're putting all this pressure onto might not have that same pressure or same hope. They didn't fail in their last three relationships. Yeah. So they're thinking, hey, this is just going to be another fun ride. And then now they're stepping into something they didn't even realize was that deep. Yeah. What do you say about dating like a bad bitch? <laughs> I mean, are you nervous? Does that pressure on you to level up? Because you know that there might be somebody out there who's like, he ain't doing it right. Even though well, he may not be able to, they may not be able to tell, but they're assuming that you're not doing it right. What do you say? Like, how do you handle that kind of pressure? Well, Kobe Bryant says, <laughs> <laughs> everything negative, pressure and challenges, is an opportunity for me to rise. Mm. So dealing with bad bitches is just a next step for me. It's just like, okay, she's fine. And we can see, as a man, I can see it. She's either got her nails done, her hair done, she's got a look in her face, she got a confidence in her walk. I'm like, all right, cool. Before I met her, she took care of herself in a way that's noticeable. Whether it's her mental status, because I can hear it in her conversation, I'm gonna step to her and try to say something, try to hear, hear her out, see if there's more things that I like. But the pressure of she looks too good to, to speak to that I hear about, I don't really know that pressure. Mm. Because like I said before, if I see a good looking woman that I think I could talk to when I was single, that's, I would spend the time talking to her to figure out. You know what I mean? That's why I got you. You know, I, was, I wasn't going to give up. I had no reason to stop. I didn't really make it that hard either. I say it worked out because I'm fine too. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Listen, my final question to you is this. What would you say to young men 16 to 25 who are trying to get a beautiful woman who's driven, independent, but high maintenance. Not but, but and high maintenance. I, I want to tell them, stop. You know what I mean? Just focus on your goals right now. You know what I mean? Because like, like, like we just discussed, discussed, you and I didn't have a hard time being with each other because you already had your high maintenance and already had my shit together where I was like, if I get with this woman, I could take care of what she's doing right now, but I also know that I could still stay focused on my goals. And I think that if a young man is 16 right now, just focused on his main goal is just to get a fine woman, he's focused on the wrong thing. Mm. He's 16. By the time he's 30, which is the new average for men who get married right now, used to be like 18, 20, but in the recent research in 2023, it's now 30. If by the time he's 30 and he wants to get married, he might not be with the same girl he was with when he was 16. Mm -hmm. So he's wasting his time thinking that he needs to spend time chasing a bad bitch. He needs to chase a bag. But I mean, the fact of the matter is that we start to prepare for childbearing at a young age. Mm -hmm. Some women at 11, others at 13, mm -hmm. and very rarely some younger than that. Mm -hmm. So because we're physically preparing for childbearing and relationships, how can men keep up with our mental, emotional, and physical growth? If, you know, he's like, I'm just going to focus at 16 on my career, where she's like, I'm ready to have a baby and I don't even know how to that, do this. That, that pressure is on the woman. At 13, 16, because, just because her ovaries dropping don't mean a man got to say, all right, I got to chase you now. You got to focus on waiting. At 13 to 16, same thing I would say to that 16-year-old girl, focus on your bag. You don't need to be worried about, a, worried about a relationship. Focus on going to school and think about what career you're going to have at potentially 28 when a man starts looking at you and saying, it's time for me to get married. No, I mean, I hear you. I feel like I feel like I'm happy that I started like dating in, at 15. I mean, I didn't know much and I didn't have a lot of guidance about how to deal with men, but I dealt with them according to how I felt, right? I didn't always have like the fact the facts of how to deal with men, what they're thinking. But I feel like a lot of the experiences that I've had with men really allow me to be here today, to be really certain about myself. I, like, I learned a lot about myself and about love and about relationships by dating. I mean, I used to have really long term relationships, like seven years from like within my teenage years until my 20s. But that experience really allowed me to be prepared for my husband. So, I, I mean, dating is, is that, okay, I think, right? I think that depends on what you, well, again, what you're trying to provide. We were talking again about men being providers, him worrying about how to date a girl is not more important than him getting more money because ultimately what he's going to provide is 
safety and financial security. Mm -hmm. A woman might be trying to offer her man how to not argue with her husband or how to offer him a, a good night's rest, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that might be something she's trying to do when she's younger. She wants to figure out now. You know, uh, some women say, uh, you don't know how to handle a real woman. You know what I mean? You have those women who, when they say that, they just mean they can't be quiet. Then you have those women, when they say that, they mean like, hey, you you never had a fine woman with values and you don't know how to deal with me and treat me in the court and, you know, treat it in a way. So I think that, yeah, there is a time when you should start dating just for that moment. And maybe that's in your roaring 20s, you know what I mean? Your early 20s. I don't think... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Purr. <laughs> Punani was per. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, purr. you know, but that's but 16. <laughs> it's not that important. You know what I mean? You're not even. It was we very even, important to not, me. We because we it's fun at 16. That's what we think is important. I was serious. Plus, we're, we're pushing away school at 16. I remember 16. I was like, fuck school. I'm about to graduate. I'm never <laughs> doing this shit again. You know what I mean? I yeah. got two more years and I'm done. That's oh, what man. we were thinking. You know what I mean? I, I had a girlfriend at 16 too, so I get it. But I was also focused on what I was going to do after I got out. And I think that's more important than just me trying to be prepared for marriage. So what I'm understanding is that we need to apply more pressure towards our goals versus trying to be in relationships and providing for people when we're still in a position of learning how to provide for ourselves. 100%. If we're, to, if we're focused on our career status, we're focused on our goals, then that means we more than likely have a better plan for ourselves. Because if I want to get married and have kids, I got to have a long-term plan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kids, you know what I mean? Even at 18, like we just discussed, yeah. they don't have it figured out. You're a parent of an 18-year-old, you're still probably going to be shelling them some money. So I got to come up with like a 25-year plan mm -hmm. to make sure these little people who are going to become huge have money. Yeah. So at adults. 16, mm -hmm. I, I need to be thinking about what I'm going to do by the time I'm 30 when I get married. How I'm gonna be able to provide. We had our for the kids family. pretty young though. Like 24. I don't, I don't think 26, I don't 24 think that is that young. young. I think 26. You know what I mean? Young. I was still trying That's, to. That was, that used to be, <laughs> that, used to be <laughs> that used to be the average, right? Rather yeah. than the 18 year old girl or it's the 16 true. year old girl who's thinking about having a baby and yeah. getting pregnant because it's yeah. happening. We it's, were like, yeah. hey, let's, let's, let's wait. Let's start dating. We were in our dating phase and we were like, this person's pretty tight. <laughs> I know. Right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Facts though. <laughs> Facts. So we locked it in and we yeah. got our chance and had our children. Yeah. And I think that being at the age we are now, focusing on our goals and having our long term plan is the goal everyone should have. I feel like I got a lot of pressure off of you because you came from a really huge family and your dad did something that a lot of people didn't do. Um and out of respect to your family's business, I won't name it. I'll just say that it was really challenging to, you know, have a man who had all this confidence and being able to practice um, what many people are currently getting into or many people stereotype as a sexual relationship to have many wives or many women or dating many women. And I think it's always great to, if you're dating multiple women, to be honest. But I feel like there's such a gem in being able to practice polygamy because it is the village like uh, lifestyle in which you can offer your children and your family and your friends, but it really takes an upstanding individual to really be the glue uh, amongst those women and for the women to have the same uh, strong communication with each other as well as with the men that they're dealing with. So for those of you who are interested in polygamy or polyandry or polyamory, do consider uh, everything that we've mentioned, regardless if you are part of the LGBTQ community or if you are heterosexual, I do think that it is important to state the facts. What is the foundation? Uh, what are your morals? And when finding the right partner or partners, uh, are they going to be there during the pressure? Change and growth and your transformations, all those things. These are important things to think about. And that brings us to the word of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you okay me today. What's the word of the day? The word of the day is incipient. In an initial stage, beginning to happen or develop. Here's one example of a sentence. She could feel incipient happiness building up. Another example of the definition of is develop into a specific a specified type of role. We seemed more like friends than incipient lovers. Mm. Incipient. 
word of the day. Hashtag word of the day. Facts and feelings, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. This is something that we're trying new, but the beauty of being able to work with Bosque out behind the camera and dealing with the little minions in the back as well. I mean, it's crazy, but we're happy to be here because this is part of the process. You have an idea, make sure you're acting on it. And once again, make sure you subscribe below and comment on your thoughts. Disclaimer, by the way, to the LGBTQ family community, okay? We love you for who you are and we recognize what's going on out there in the community. But just like you have your freedom of speech and things that you want to say and share, so do we. But if you do have something you want to say, make sure you comment below. But keep it sweet, keep it fresh, because you don't want to see our rap. Just say.